Chances are, if you're a guitar player like me, you ain't got no bass because you ain't got no money for your bass. But I ain't got no bass. You ain't got no bass. And Groot ain't got no bass. So what you need is a DIY GB, or as I like to call it, a do-it-yourself guitar bass. Now, just full disclosure, this method is not going to ever replace a real bass played by a real bass player on any day, or for that matter, any software bass emulation that you can get, I believe is still never going to replace a true bass player. However, in a pinch, who's going to know? Well, a bass player would know, but in a pinch, again, if you're looking for a quick bass line on a track, this might be very helpful for you. So you can see I am holding my custom shop Telecaster here, and I'm actually going to be using this to create some fake bass. Um, essentially, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recording a clean electric guitar tone direct out of our guitar into our audio interface. And then once we bring that into our DAW of choice, we're going to be detuning that clean guitar tone by an octave, just like how a bass guitar is an octave below a guitar. And then we're gonna be applying some post-processing so that it sounds more like a bass. So that's real quick what we're gonna be doing in a nutshell, um, but follow along uh, and you'll see how this works exactly over the shoulder. So one of the things that's gonna help this process right out of the gate is if we guitar players think for a moment like a bass player. Um, you can do this whole process, but if you don't think like a bass player, it's not gonna sound like a bass. Um, and so one of the things I start with first is remembering that nine times out of 10, a bass player is gonna be locked up with the kick drum um, if you have drums in the song. So that's something I'm gonna be adhering to quite dramatically. I'm gonna lock up with the kick drum in the song because it does have drums. The second thing is I'm gonna ditch the pick. Don't need this guy. And I'm gonna play with my fingers. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because a pick is gonna automatically have more attack than your fingers. And typically the guitar is gonna have a lot more attack than the bass. So I wanna kind of smoothen out those peaks um, and I want almost less transients um, when I'm recording this. I want it to be a little bit more smooth so it sits a little bit better in the mix. Again, this is gonna kind of depend on the genre that you're playing and recording, but I think, especially when we're doing this process where the guitar is already gonna have more attack, it's already a better idea to kind of go without a pick. Um, the other thing I'm doing here is just kind of keeping with that rather than playing through my bridge pickup, I'm actually playing through the neck pickup so I have less attack and it sounds a little bit warmer. So without further ado, I'm gonna kind of hop in here and lay down a track. So you can see uh, this is the recorded bass track that I just played, and let's hear exactly what is going on here. So you can see it's kind of a little bit choppy um, in here. Obviously the fact that we're playing smaller strings doesn't help. Um, but but what, what we're gonna do is kind of dive into kind of like the basic concepts of what I'm doing in here. Um, it's gonna vary from da to da, but what I'm essentially doing is I'm gonna take this note, or really all of these notes, and I have in Pro Tools set this to track to be um, in X form, which basically means we're um, enabling elastic audio, which is kind of Pro Tools version of like a pitch shifting um, algorithm. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna right click on the clip and go into elastic properties. And we want this track over here, you can see this is the information that this brings up. We want to detune it by negative 12 semitones. 
what that means is negative 12 half steps, um, basically a whole octave. So we're going to hit enter on that. And you'll notice it's going to think about it because it's rendering that down. And here we are. This is what it sounds like now. at that. Now, of course, you'll notice I'm running through this, this through a ton of processing. So I did want to kind of tackle what I'm exactly doing in here. Basically, if you strip all this away, this is kind of the tone we have. So much quieter. I wanted a little bit more of a distorted kind of uh, crunchy tone. And so what I've done is this. Number one um, is just the VMR, our virtual mix rack from Slate. Um, I'm just doing a little emulation of a channel um, on a old vintage console. Um, so I have it set to the British 4KG. I think that's a SSL um, emulation there. And right after that is actually kind of an emulation here of a bass amp. And so I'm essentially using the bass amp and a little compression here. Um, this is also from Slate. Um, this is the Slate THU, um, which just has a bunch of different amp models in here. You can do this with whatever amp software, amp bundling that you have. Um, if you're using Logic or GarageBand, they come bundled with it. So there you go um, right there. But there's a lot of different companies that do amp modeling. Um, you just need some, anything basic. Um, and I'm running through that through the speaker. That's how we're kind of getting some of that sound um, in here to make it sound a little bit more like a bass. In fact, if you even just mute the speaker, this is kind of what it sounds like here without the speaker. With just adds fullness, like it's actually emulating a speaker cabinet. So that's what's kind of going on in there. Um, you kind of just tweak until you get the desired sound on the actual head of the amp, and then use um, whatever cabinet you see fit in here, just try and kind of by ear. And then next in here, um, I'm just using like a little overdrive pedal on the bass just to give it a little bit more drive and kind of crunch. Um, so that's that. Um, next, um, this is actually, you don't have to do this, um, but Pultec. Uh, this is a UA um, kind of emulation of the Pultec EQs, which I've always loved this on bass. It kind of just rounds out the sound and it's attenuating the low end frequencies and the higher end frequencies. So you can kind of see here, I have that set up at around 100 for the low end section, which 100 is kind of where the bass sits um, at its fundamental. And then if you go up into the highs, you can kind of see that little kind of almost like um, crack and pop that you kind of get in the bass up in the in the higher mids um, that's set at 3k. So that's the pull tech. You could do this with really any EQ, um, but it's just kind of creating that sound um, that I like. And then here I'm doing a little bit more post EQ, notching out a little bit around 500. Let's see the exact frequency, 443 hertz. Again, this is going to vary on your guitar. Um, and this is just simple stuff that Sometimes I might do on, on the bass too. Again, another boost up around 128, a roll off here at 27 hertz. Um, you just don't need anything below that most of the time. And because we already have quite a bit of attack in, in the uh, sound, because it is a guitar detuned, I'm not really boosting anything up um, here. Oftentimes with the bass, my two points where I might boost um, if it's an actual bass are right around two and a half to three K. Sometimes I'll even boost around kind of like the 800s kind of area just to kind of get that pick attack kind of sound if you just need a little bit more punch if the bass was played with fingers. Um, and then to a little bit more of the, the kind of the string rattle, which is kind of nice sometimes um, in the sound of a bass. But that's what I'm doing here. And lastly, just a little bit of compression and some more EQ. So you can kind of see I'm running another um, 1073 kind of emulation here for preamp and then um, some 
need EQ, need base EQ, a little bit more tweaking here, and then just into a fairly slow compressor. Um, what I'm kind of trying to compress in here um, is just basically one to three dB um, of compression. Um, and you just set that and kind of before and after, you'll hear, for one, it is a little bit quieter for sure because I am adding some plugins here, but this is before. And then after. So not bad, right? Um, if we put it in the mix, just so you can kind of hear it in context, it sounds like this. So pretty good. I mean, if you were you know, just hearing that, not knowing that that was a guitar, um, honestly, I don't know if you'd know. Um, now, obviously all the bass players in the room would totally probably know. Um, in fact, you know, if I was really listening to it, I probably would too. But in a pinch, if you're just looking for something quick um, and easy that still sounds somewhat like a bass, this is a great option. Um, any last kind of things that I would probably do, um, I would definitely go in and tighten up that part so it just lands perfectly in with the bass drum, kick drum um, in here so they're just locked in tighter. Um, but you can totally do that just by going in and kind of chopping up each note at the transient um, and kind of moving some notes over. Um, if you are using Pro Tools or any other DAW, you, you have options to warp with the elastic audio so you can kind of move these around a little bit as well. So lots of options, but that's just a kind of a quick walkthrough of how to get a bass tone um, with a guitar if you don't have a bass handy. Again, at the end of the day, if you're able to use a bass or you have a friend who can lay down a bass track, always go that route. It's gonna sound way better, but hope this was helpful. Please smash that like button if you found it helpful and do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to stay tuned for more videos. And real quickly, if you're interested in working on a project of any kind with me, whether you need editing or mixing or help arranging your song and songwriting or even just some sweet guitar tracks, um, be sure to check out my website. It is joshuacrow.com. And you can check this out with my portfolio. I'm always trying to keep that updated um, and learn some more about me and the services I can offer you. Um, so be sure to check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.